morning, everyone, and welcome to this live edition of Hands On with the GraphTech CE6000. So today, basically, we're going to go over um, the basics of how to run the GraphTech CE6000. Now, during the class, at any moment in time, if you have any questions whatsoever, just please chat them in. I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. So. Uh, I did launch a poll at the beginning of the class on do you own the GraphTech CE6000 vinyl cutter and over half of you have chimed in and said you do. So today basically I'm hoping to maybe teach you something different. Um, for the rest of you that do not own a GraphTech CE6000, uh, this is going to be a way to maybe teach you of something how easy it is to use a GraphTech to maybe add this to your business. So uh, first we're going to get started on, I'm going to teach you how to maybe do a few little designs uh, using our CADWorks Live, which is a free online software program. It is web-based. You do not have to download it. You can go in and create art. And then also, you can also send it over to the cutter to cut. Uh, basically, you would have to install VectorCut, which is the cut driver for CADWorks. So we're going to head over to CADWorks and get started on creating SMART. So basically this is CADWorks Live. Uh, it is a free online software program. Uh, there are thousands of clip arts, templates, fonts. Um, you would create an account, uh, then you're going to log in. So I'm just going to log in here with my account. This is where you will launch the design studio for you to start creating some art. You can import from here. You can go to your files that you already have saved. Uh, you can do your text, your clip art, your templates. Um, you can also import and vectorize art as well. You can add effects, um, go through all the different templates, whether you're looking for maybe a school mascot and you want to add different fonts to that. All that can be done in CADWorks. Um, basically, we're just going to get started. I'm going to create a name and number. Uh, let's say we're decorating jerseys. Uh, so we'll just start with a name. We'll go with Smith. We'll pick the fonts. Um, a very popular font for uh, jerseys would be a varsity. So you can just go up here and type in your varsity fonts. Double click. And there you have your Smith. Uh, normal names for placement on a jersey is about two inches. And then you're just going to apply an OK. So there we have our name. And we'll go back into the text. We're going to add a number. Um, we'll say Smith's number is 15. We're going to use the same font, which would be the varsity fonts. Double click on the varsity fonts. Now the size would depend whether you're doing the fronts or the backs, so we're just going to pretend that we are doing uh, a back of a jersey and we'll make it about 10 inches. You're going to apply it, and there you have your Smith with your number 15. So the name is 2 inches, the width, uh, on the, the name is 2 inches in the height, and the number is 10 inches in height. Um, you can actually highlight those if you want to center them. So when you're cutting, so there we have centered your name and number on the design. Um, I smelled Smith wrong. Let me double click on this. There we go. So basically, after we have this design, um, if you wanted to add a two color to it, it's because basically this is a one color design, you can do so. All you basically have to do is double click on it, go down to add an effect. You can do a gap outline, you can do a large contour, you can do an inside or a small contour. So basically, we're just going to add a small contour around it, and this is going to give us an actual two color design. And then if you wanted to break that apart, you would just go up to shaping and just break it apart by region. And there you have your there you have your two color design. If you wanted to do that also with the number, you would just double click on it, add an effect, go up to your small contour, 
and now your number is also a two color design. And then you can also go over here on the panel, the color panel, and if you wanted the background to be orange and gray, you have that option as well. And then if you wanted to remove the effect, you just double click on it, go to contour and remove effect. So designing a name and number is very simple. And then once you do have the design created, basically you're just ready to send it over to the cutter to start cutting. Um, since I already installed VectorCut onto my laptop, um, I'm just going to send it over to VectorCut. And then here's where you will do your material size. You're going to mirror it, rotate it. Let's say you need four or five of these Smith. Um, you basically want it to fit around so you're, you're not, um, you're getting the most of your material so you don't have that much waste left over. Um, here we're going to um, set up the graph tech and then we'll come back over to the software, we'll get the width, we'll mirror it, we'll rotate and then at the end of the class we'll go ahead and send it over to the cutter so you guys can see it, uh, how we created the art and sent it to the graph tech to cut that design. So now I'm going to uh, change camera view, so I'm going to send you guys over here to the cutter. All right, so now you can see me. So this is the GraphTech CE6000. Um, this is a 24 inch vinyl cutter. So basically you're looking at, you can put rolls of 15 inch or 20 inch in the vinyl cutter. You have about 23.7 cutting width on your vinyl cutter. Um, when you do get the GraphTech, it does come with the cutter, the stands, that's all included as well as the software. Um, the software for the GraphTech is GraphTech Studio, and it also is compatible with CADWorks. So I've used CADWorks for many years, so I'm very comfortable with CADWorks, and it is a free online software program through Stalls. It gives you the benefit of using both softwares with your vinyl cutter. So whether you're using Corel Draw or Adobe Illustrator, which is also fine because we do have Cutting Master 3, which plugs into Corel Draw and Adobe Illustrator. So, and you can use all those softwares with the graph tech. So to get started, basically I have a 15 inch roll of thermofilm here. So I'm going to load the material into the vinyl cutter and show you how to set your pinch rollers so you're cutting at the edge of the material so we're not wasting that much material since you did happen to spend the money on this. So basically we're going to load the roll of material into the vinyl cutter and we're going to feed it through the front. So on the graph tech, as you can tell, you have blue lines. So basically you want your vinyl, um, your pinch rollers to be under the blue lines. So with this, you might have to move it around a little bit to find out exactly where you want to position your pinch rollers. You just want to make sure your pinch rollers are under the blue because if you do not, you will get an error and I will show you an example. So for example, if I had my material like this, and as you can tell, the pinch rollers are not under the blue lines. So I'm basically, I'm going to lock it down and I'm going to feed it. And it's actually telling me load media, so it's not even recognizing that I do have a roll of material in here because it's not under the blue lines. So we're going to move the pinch rollers and move the material to make sure um, it is lined up properly and it's at the far edge of each side of the material. So you're going to lock it down, and on here you're going to select roll one. It's just reading that there is a roll of material in the vinyl cutter. It's not a sheet. It's not a piece like the glitter flake I have here. It is actual roll. And then basically it's going to read to give you your width of how much material you do have on the cutter for cutting. So it's going to come to the fore edge, and as you can tell, the um, blade, it is a little bit off of the material, so I'm just going to move it over a notch. So we do have, we have set that up. So basically what we would do now is change the gram of force, but I do want to put a 20 inch roll of material in the vinyl cutter as well to show you also how to load a 20 inch roll. So I'm going to unlock this, 
take the 15 inch roll ounce and we're going to add a 20 inch roll. So the 20 inch roll we have our fluorescent orange glitter flake. So we're going to load in the back the 20 inch roll. We're going to feed it through the front. And here you might again have to realign your pinch rollers to where you want it to fit. So we're going to bring it far over to the edge. Move this over a little bit and I'm going to lock it down. And then I'm also going to load that it is a roll and it's going to go back and forth and it actually just beeped and told me to realign the pinch rollers, which I did do that on purpose because I did want you to see that I did not have it all the way to the edge and it was an under the blue line. So just, just move your pinch roller over to the edge and then lock it back down. And we're going to uh, select that it is a roll and it's going to re read back and forth just so you can get your width area so you know how much room you have when you're creating your arts. So again, it's off of the material. So you just want to move it over a, a notch. And basically, if you would look down on your down key, it's going to tell me that I have 19.59 inches of material to cut. So when I go back over to, the vector, uh, over to the vector cut a little bit later, I'll be able to put those measurements in to the software, and then we can send the job so we know how much room we do have. So that's basically how you load a roll of material into your vinyl cutter. Something else I want to tell you, show you about is when you are doing a job on the vinyl cutter, uh, the GraphTech has what's called guarantee tracking. So you can send those bigger jobs to the vinyl cutter and basically you can walk away. You don't have to stand there and babysit your cutter. Um, so what this has is called guarantee tracking. I'm going to show you how that works. So let's say, for example, we have our cutter all set up. We're ready to send a job. And let's say, for example, you have a 30 inch job that you need to send. And maybe you need to do, maybe do some paperwork, answer the phone. So basically you're going to set your origin. Your origin is your starting point. That's it's telling the cutter that's where you want it to start, which is actually right here on the edge of the material. And then if you scroll, if you hit your down key, at the top there's an X and a Y, and you can start feeding it forward. So you make sure that it's not going to go off track and the pin rollers are going to stay on the material. So you can send that big job. Because the graph, te the graph tech, you can actually do a 25 feet job and basically walk away. But you want to make sure that your material is not going to move because you don't want to waste this material. So for example, let's just say you're doing a 30 inch job. So right now I'm at 12. I'm up to 17 inches and as you can tell the, uh, the pin rollers are still on the vinyl. So I can send a job this big and basically walk away. I'm guaranteed that my material is not going to move and I'm not going to waste all this material. And let's say you just uh, Keep going, you want to use more. So I'm up to 25 inches. So basically I know I can send a 25 inch job and walk away. So we'll get it up to 30. So now we're at 30 inches and as you can tell it is on and it is good to go. So basically you could send that job to the vinyl cutter and you're guaranteed that it's not going to shift or move or anything like that. So basically after this is all done, you can go home and it's going to take you back to the original and as you can tell it moved which that happens so before we sent that which is actually perfect so now you know you didn't want to send that when you send it home so it did go off track so basically you would just wind a roll back up as I just did unlock it and reposition the vinyl and you might want to move the pinch rollers up another thing you can also do is instead of locking it down, you can just take a, an estimated guess, like how much material you are going to use, and then you can feed it through like this as well. And then lock it down, and then you're going to read, it is a roll, so it's going to read back and forth the width, and then it is going to send it home. And you know you have that much material that you can actually send a job. Is there any questions on like loading and with the materials? No, not at this time. Later on, I know you just, you uh, did mention in your outline that you're going to be talking about using smaller pieces of yes. unknown scrap. So once you get there, that'll cover what we have. Okay, perfect. So let's do, we can do actually a scrap. So I have uh, two scrap papers, pieces of glitter flake left over that 
basically we ran a job and this is what was left over. We didn't want to throw it away because we, we already bought that roll of material. So I'm going to load this into the graph tech and show you how you can load pieces of scrap. So it would work the same way as a roll. You're just going to uh, move the pinch rollers over to fit your piece of material that you have available here. So with this, I'm going to put it to the far edge of the material. And then I'm going to lock it down. So this is not a roll, so I'm going to select sheet, which is number three. And basically, it's going to read how much width and height I have. So when I'm sending that job, so I can make sure that that artwork is not, as, is not bigger than the piece of material that I do have. So if you scroll down, you'll look and I have 10 inches by six inches. So then I can go over to my uh, software and in the driver, I can put my width and my height at 10, six and make sure, let's say you have a four by four design. You know that four by four design is going to fit in this. If you have two of them, you can make it work by rotating, maybe moving stuff around. Um, but that's basically how you do a piece. We can do one more piece to show you. So this is actually kind of a bigger piece of material that we have left over. So you're going to load it into your vinyl cutter. And again, you're going to want to move your pinch rollers over to the far edge of the machine. There you go. And then you're going to lock it down. And then again, you're going to hit sheet, which is number three. And it's going to give you your width and your length of how big this piece of material is. And then if you hit the down key, you're going to see I have 16 in width and then I have 12 in height. And then you can go over to the software and put whatever designs you have. And we have a question. Yes, Donna wants to know, uh, why does our blade holder continue to go to the left instead of to the right side as, their, as theirs does on their cutter? That is a very good question. That is actually in your properties on your driver. So basically, if you go into your properties, you can change the X and the Y to go on either side. And, that, and then you would just save that. So if you wanted to start over here, that's fine. If you wanted to start over here, that's fine. So basically, you just go into your software, and you can change that. And we have another question. Jennifer wants to know how small a piece of a scrap can you um, use? I wouldn't go less than two inches. Three. Three inches is fine. Like, if I wanted to cut this in half and just send this, that's fine. I mean, I wouldn't just do like a little corner of this material. That's just, that's um, kind of too small. But if I wanted to cut this in half and just use this, that would be fine. Another question? Uh, yeah, Kimberly wants to know if there is a holder or a catch basket that can be attached to the front of the cutter so for those really long jobs so that the material isn't, you know, going down onto the floor of the shop. There is. Uh, you, it does not actually come with a cutter, but it is an accessory that you can add to the cutter. Um, Graph Tech actually sells it. Stalls, we do not have the basket carrier, but yes, there is, um, a, there is a piece of uh, accessory out there that will stop your material, and you can... Instead of leaving it on the ground when you're doing the large jobs, it's like a basket and it will catch it. Any more questions? Last one. Uh, when you're doing a cut job and, and it's complete, how do you get the cutter to feed the material to the end of the job? Uh, Kimberly says that hers always pulls the material back through to where it started. Um, basically, what you would do there is it can be done. Um, instead of setting... So if you send a job over to your cutter, and after that job is done cutting, it comes all the way back home. Um, instead of doing that, you could take off the auto weed border, where basically it's going to stop right in its tracks. So when you're setting up the art and the driver, and there's a box around your design, if you take that off, when it's done cutting, it's going to stop right, right there. It's not going to take you back home. Any other questions? All right, so let's move on. So we got about loading the guarantee tracking, how you can cut pieces with the Graph Tech. Um, basically, what I'm going to show you now is the blade. So the Graph Tech does come with the blade, which is the 0.5 uh, millimeter. So with the blade, a lot of people think 
that you need your blade sticking out an inch. That is not the case. So basically we have our blade sticking out about a half a credit card thickness. Because when you're cutting the material, you don't want it to go through the carrier, you just want it to go through the, uh, the material. Because you don't want to ruin your cutting strip, which is back here. So basically when you're cutting, you only want to cut through this part of material. You want to leave this part so when you're taking it over to heat apply, you still have a, um, you have a carrier on it so it doesn't stick to the top of your heat press. So about a half a credit card thickness. It's very easy to change a blade ounce. Um, basically you just pull that forward and take the blade ounce. Um, a blade normally lasts. Um, if you're cutting all day, every day, of course you're going to need to change the blade a little bit more often than not. Um, but if you're using your vinyl cutter here and there, you're looking about three to five months. Um, if you are cutting a lot of glitter flake, you will be going through um, blades more often because of the, the true glitter textured finish on that. Is there any questions on the blades? No? Okay. So basically you're going to put that back down there and you're going to tighten it up. So we did go over the blades. Um, now I'm just basically going to load a roll of material, which I'll use the thermofilm, which is a 15 inch roll. I'm going to put the pinch rollers to the far edge, as we talked about before. I'm going to lock it down. It is a roll. And as it, you can tell, my pinch rollers are off. So I'm going to move them over. The nice thing about the graph tech, it will tell you if your pinch rollers are not lined up. So if you do not have them under the blue line, it's going to let you know. All right, so we have that all set up. It did go over off the material a little bit, so we're just going to move it. You want to use as uh, least amount of material as possible so you can save money. So I do got it on the very edge. So next we're going to go into the control panel. Uh, the nice thing about the GraphTech, which is one of my personal favorite things, um, I know here at Stalls we do carry a lot of different materials. And we work with them all the time. And remembering the grams of force is very difficult. Um, so with the GraphTech you can actually store up to eight different presets. So when you go into your condition test, and you press number one, you will see that you can store up to the eight different materials. And again, since Stalls has so many products of different vinyls, it's kind of hard to remember all the grams of force. So I actually have this cutter set up with our top materials that we use the most of. Our fashion film, our thermo film, our premium plus, uh, sports film light, glitter flake, 3M, hologram, and they're all stored in here with their different settings. So every time I load a roll of glitter flake on, I do not have to remember the grams of force. I can just press that number and it's there. And then you can do a test cut to make sure that your blade is still good, which we're going to go over that as well. So for this particular material, this is thermofilm and I have it set at a number two. So I'm going to go to my number two and I'm going to press enter. So on this screen you'll see thermofilm, you'll see your tool, which is your blade holder, the speed, um, on the graph tech, you can go down as low as one. You can go down to one up to 30. 30 is the highest you can go. It will cut about, um, I think, 23 inches per second, but I might be off by a few. It might cut up to like 35. So I'm going to take it back up to a 25. That's where I usually keep my speed at. And then I'm going to press. Um, I'm going to go back to that main screen. So my force is at a 19. I don't know if it's going to cut out a 19, so we're going to do a test cut to see if we need to lower it down, bring it up a little bit. So when we're weeding, it's not coming off and we have to recut that job. So I have it on 19. I'm going to press a test cut. And basically how you do that, you'll see test cut at the bottom of the screen. You just press your over key. And then you're going to come up with force or cutter offset. So I'm just going to press a number one for the force. And basically it's going to cut me uh, three triangles with squares around them. And then I can see which one is the correct gram of force. So your middle one is always your uh, what you have it say it as. So we have it as a 19. And it weeded perfectly fine. The first one is at an 18. That also weeded perfectly fine. And then the last one would be at a 20. 
and that also weeded just fine. So any of those settings would work. So the 19 I have it on is perfectly fine to send that job over. So we have your material loaded under the pinch rollers, your blade is correct, your force is correct. So we have the machine ready to go, almost. So I'm gonna cancel out of this and I'm going to go home. So I'm going to set it up because when you do send it back home, it just went actually went over top of the test cuts and you don't want to start your job there. So I'm going to move it over beside the test cut so we don't waste that material. And then I'm going to set the origin. The origin is basically your starting point. It gives you, it lets your cutter know where to start cutting the job at. If you don't set the origin, your cutter can go off and just start cutting anywhere. So it's very important to set your starting point so it knows that this is your home spot, this is where you want to start your job at. So you set your origin and it will click and tell you new origin point is set. And now basically the cutter is ready to go. All we're going to do is go back over to CADWorks and we're going to set it all up, get the measurements and send the job over. So uh, can we go back to CADWorks? Perfect. So here is the vector cut that we talked about earlier. Um, as you can tell, I have my width at seven and four because I was cutting pieces earlier today. So I'm going to get the measurements from the machine. So with the thermofilm that we loaded, we are looking at 13.79 inches. So put 13.79. And then the length, you can do it as long as you want. I usually just keep it at 50. And then you have your Smith number 15. You don't want to start cutting it right there, so you want to auto origin. And basically what that's going to do, that's going to put it at the edge of your, um, your driver. And you definitely want to mirror it. You need it to be a mirror image. So if we have two of these, um, we can rotate them around. You want to set the origin. So that Smith 15 actually fit perfect right there. There's going to be a little bit of scrap left over, but that's okay. Now let's say we needed um, two of these. So you just keep it highlighted. Oops. Just go back to back to what I just did. So you highlight it and then you go to quantity and we're going to add two. So now we have two Smith 15. Now as we were talking about earlier how uh, it always takes you back home. If you look over here at the auto weed, if you take that off, so when it's done cutting that, it's going to stop right there. It's not going to give you a box around your design. Do we have any questions? No questions, perfect. So we have our two uh, Smith 15. So basically we are ready to send it over to the uh, cutter. So we mirrored it, we set our origin. All you have to do now is send cut job. And here we'll go back to the screens for you guys to see it. Oh, you're already there. So right now it's cutting the Smith 15. Now, if you were doing a two-color design, of course, you would, if it was red and black, you have your red loaded, and after this job is done, then you would load your black material and send that cut job over. And then it would be up to you to take it to the heat press and heat apply it for uh, lining it up. And the speed, like I said, I do have it down on 25. You can speed it up. You can slow it down if need be. I basically only slow it down when I'm doing really fine, intricate designs. Um, that way it will get the full effect of those curves and those rounds. All right, so the cutting job is completed. So the nice thing about the GraphTech, you can hit the down, and it also has a fast button if you want to speed it up. So we got it to the edge. We're going to cut it off. And then you just use your razor blade. And then you have a two, uh, two names and numbers. We'll put that down. Um, another nice thing about uh, vector cut is you can cut by color. So for example, if you did have a two color design, um, let's do the American flag, for example. That's a red, white, and blue. Um, you can design the, the flag in CADWorks as red, white, and blue, send it over to VectorCut, and you would have the red, white, and blue 
So basically you don't have to send each color individually. You can cut by color through vector cuts. And I see there's a question. Uh, this is from Donna. She wants to, uh, don't you want the weed, the auto weed box to make it easier to weed? And if you duplicate a design, can you get it to auto weed each design separately? Uh, the auto weed is very important for weeding, um, but it also, it leaves you back to the starting points, as the lady mentioned earlier. Um, so yes, the auto weed is nice to have when you are weeding because then you already have a box around your design and you can start just pulling the material off from the auto weed box. And the other question, how you ask for if you can put it around each individually one, not in vector cut, you cannot. Um, maybe in Corel Draw and Adobe Illustrator, that might be possible, but in vector cut, no. It would actually put a weed box around the whole entire design. Another question? Robert wants to know, uh, does the machine automatically set the margins, or can you set them through the software? The machine, the origins, no. You automatically, you have to set the origin yourself. There's a button up here. Uh, you just basically, every time you are starting a job, you want to set your origin. You have to do it by hand on the cutter itself. Any other questions? Perfect. So we do have our name and number already cut out. And it is very easy to weed because we did put a weeding box around it. Um, back to uh, the software. You want to go back to CADWorks for me? Thank you. So for example, uh, we're going to close this out and I'm going to uh, show you how, how we were talking about the two color design. So if we double clicked on the Smith and we wanted to add, I broke it apart. So. We'll go with the 15. So if you wanted to add this as a two color, you go to add effect. We're going to just give it a small contour. And then you can highlight this and then you can break it apart by color. So you have your black and your gray. So when you send it over to vector cuts, you know the top layer is going to be the gray and then the bottom, well, I'm sorry, the bottom layer would be the gray and then the top layer would be the black. So when you're sending this to vector cut, I want to actually show you how you can cut by color. So as you can tell on my screen, I have a black and a gray. So if you have your black loaded into your cutter, you click the black, you're going to cut that 15. You hit the gray, you'll cut that, that part out. And then basically all you would change is your width. And then you want to make sure you want to mirror it. And then if you need space, as you can tell, that's a lot of waste right there on the screen. Just rotate it. And then just go over to your origin and then auto origin and it's going to put it in its place. Yes, you're going to have some scrap there, but it's not as much as it was when it was uh, portrait. Do we have any questions? So we have the software. Uh, we'll go back to the cutter. There we go. So we went over how to load and uh, unload materials. I showed you about the guarantee tracking, went over the blade. Uh, we went to the control panel. Uh, basically, you would do all your presets in when you install the cutter in the, uh, the cutter control. Um, you can get into more for uh, advanced features if you would like. Uh, we're not going to cover it in this class. Uh, Wednesday, November 18th, I'm going to actually do a part two on the GraphTech CE6000. I'm actually going to go more in depth with like the arms, the tangential emulation, the overcut feature. I'm basically going to show you how you can change those in and out if need be. Um, we have no other questions? So we're about five minutes out. Um, I do want to thank you for taking this time to let me teach you a few things about the GraphTech CE6000. As I did mention on Wednesday, November 18th, I'm going to do a part two. Um, this was basic, just starting out the basics on the vinyl cutter. We are going to go more advanced uh, for the arms, the tangential, uh, answer any other questions you guys may have. Um, I do want to thank you for this time you've spent with me today. I um, hope everyone has a great day. There is a survey at the end of the class. If you like more information on the graph tech, I can get in touch with you. Um, other than that, I do want to thank you for taking this time today, and everybody have a great day.